to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. The Chanderi stands out for being a rich yet delicate blend of silk and cotton. Meticulously handwoven by artisans for centuries. Known for its beautiful texture, which is airy and light, this weave comes from a small town tucked away deep in the heart of India, from where it gets its name. Chanderi is situated around 200 kilometers away from the historic town of Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh. Located in the Ashoknagar district, Chanderi was founded by the Pratiharas in the 10th century. It was located on the Dakshina Path, the ancient trade route to the Deccan, and it continued to be a significant city in medieval India as it got incorporated within the domain of the Delhi Sultanate rulers. The 14th century Moroccan traveller Ibn Battuta talks about the wealth and prosperity of Chanderi in his records. It once again gained prominence under the Malwa Sultans and Bundela Rajputs who ruled the region in the 15th and 16th century. While we don't know when the weaving of the Chanderis started, there is an interesting legend that links the weave to the Mahabharata. Locals believe that the Chanderi fabric was introduced by Lord Krishna's cousin, Shishupal. Some sources also suggest that the ancient technique of Chanderi weaving existed even between the 2nd and the 7th centuries. Historically speaking, there is evidence to show that the weaving tradition here gained prominence in the 13th century when the town was under Alauddin Khilji's rule. According to local weavers, a saint came and settled here at Chanderi during this time and a community of weavers migrated with him from the area of Bengal. They specialized in silk weaving, especially Chanderi, and started the weaving tradition here. This style, which incorporated working with gold and silver threads, was heavily influenced by Mughal designs at that time. The weavers even made garments for the officials of the Delhi Sultanate and for the Mughal court. However, there's also reference to one of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb's letter that talks about the decline in the export of Chanderi. It was under the rule of the Sindhyas of Gwalior in the 19th century that the tradition of Chanderi weaving saw a revival and sari weaving also started here. It is said that by the 19th century, the Chanderi fabrics were as valuable as the Dhaka muslin. Visit Chanderi today and you can see the legacy of this weave everywhere. The streets are lined with looms where each artisan is engrossed in making these fabrics in the old traditional way in pit looms like this, using a combination of cotton and silk threads. The gold threads for the zari in Chanderi is sourced from Surat and the silk comes from South India. Traditional motifs used in chanderis include coins, flowers, plants and even geometrical patterns. A unique feature of chanderi weaving is that the booties or the motifs are directly woven into the fabric and are not embroidered or added later. In recent years, Chanderi has seen a great revival thanks to the efforts of the government. Today, there's a wider range of blends, silks and pure cotton Chanderis as well. But it is the soft blends in pastel shades that really are the most popular renditions of the Chanderi weave. <laughs>